All right, everybody, Mr. J here from Organized Biology. Let me just say this first. If you're coming into this just learning about action potentials, membrane potentials, chances are it's really confusing, right? Like the cell has a voltage, what? There are a bunch of ions moving in and out. How is it influenced? There's a lot to it. So today we're gonna go through the overview of it. I'm gonna go through very slowly and very meticulously so you can understand it really in a simple way. So let's start first with the weird question, right? What is a membrane potential? Well, what we're talking about is basically a charge difference from outside and inside of a cell. We're looking at this red cell here. Here's the cell membrane in red with some proteins embedded inside of it. If you haven't learned about membrane proteins, I recommend watching that video first. But inside of the cell, if you can look, we have a lot of proteins. These are macromolecules your cells built they build themselves made of proteins, and you can see the proteins have a massive negative charge associated with them. That makes the voltage of the cell relatively negative. Secondly, what also makes it negative? Well, we have these things called potassium leak channels, and potassium likes to hang out in high concentrations inside of the cell. I'll tell you why here in a second. So if we have high potassium inside, relatively low potassium outside, it's going to constantly leak out of this channel. So if we're losing a positively charged thing, we also make the cell relatively negative. So that is why if you look at a resting cell, resting membrane potential, the cell will be at about negative 70 millivolts. And we call that once again, the resting potential. Now different cells may have lower or higher resting potential. We're just gonna say negative 70 for short. Again, because of the negative proteins and losing the potassium. Now furthermore, I said just generally that there's high potassium in the cell. How do we know that? And how do we know where sodium and calcium are gonna go later on? Well, we know that we have these pumps in most cells of your body called the sodium potassium ATPase pump, fancy way for saying we need that ATP energy to be invested. We clip off that phosphate, therefore we can use some energy. And the way we do that is we throw sodium out of the cell, three sodium ions, and then we actually throw potassium right back in after it left, and we throw potassium too specifically into the cell. Now what's interesting about that is that now we have a gradient here where we have a high amount of sodium outside of the cell. So I'm going to say high sodium. And once again, a relatively low amount of sodium inside of the cell. So if sodium were to want to get the chance, sodium always wants to flow from high to low, just as potassium wanted to flow high to low as well. Now last but not least, calcium. I'm just going to straight up say that there's always going to be high calcium outside of the cell for a variety of reasons, including pumps that I'm not talking about. So therefore, it's relatively low inside of the cell. So if it gets the chance, it's going to flow high to low into the cell. Wonderful. Now, that being said, now we need to see how this cell can change its voltage. And that's where we get into graded and action potential. So we're going to start with graded potentials. What graded potentials are is basically we're at rest, and then we're going to slightly go down or slightly go up depending on the stimulus on this neuron. So as you can see, I've got two other players here, and these guys are going to be called presynaptic neurons. Presynaptic neurons, this guy as well as this guy. Now what's that mean? Pre means before, synaptic means the synapse. The synapse is the space between two neurons where they're basically communicating with each other. So it comes before the synapse, these two neurons. Now in this case, we've got two different neurons here that are going to mess with this cell. It's going to send a stimulus and we're going to mess with the cell's voltage. Well, how do we do that? Well, let's look first at the ligand-gated potassium channel here with this presynaptic neuron. Inside of this presynaptic neuron, this uh, molecule inside of it is going to be called an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Inhibitory neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter basically means a chemical that can influence some cell. It's like a chemical signal. Now, if we release that inhibitory neurotransmitter into the space, it is going to, as you can see, bind to ligand-gated potassium channels. If we bind to those, we know ligand-gated is a lock and key mechanism, the key being the neurotransmitter, lock being that receptor, we're actually going to open up these channels. 
And if we open up ligand-gated potassium channels, where do you think potassium is going to want to go? Well, as we learned, anytime it has the opportunity, potassium is actually going to leave the cell. So we're losing potassium in this case. So why is this an inhibitory neurotransmitter? Check this out. If we're losing potassium, we are now going to make this cell further negative. So I'm going to draw this in black because it's potassium. We're going to dip this voltage downward, making it more negative, okay? Several things here. If a cell gets more negative, remember N, it does nothing. When the cell is very negative, it does nothing. So we call this an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Now, why do we say that? Because we are inhibiting the postsynaptic cell. What's the postsynaptic? Well, post means after. So this red neuron is going to be the postsynaptic cell, and we're making it more negative. So that's why it's called an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Shortened up, IPSP. Wonderful. Now, another term you may hear here, 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 uh, <laughs> here, here. I'm a nerd. Um, another term you may hear of when we're getting more negative, this is called repolarization. Repolarization or just polarization. It depends on who is teaching it. Okay, so that's when this inhibitory neurotransmitter is talking here. Lose potassium, get more negative. But as you can see, we also have a blue presynaptic neuron. And as you can guess, this guy is instead going to be a stimulatory neurotransmitter. Stimulatory neurotransmitter. Now, why is that? Let's check it out. When we release the stimulatory neurotransmitter, it is going to bind to, as you can see, ligand-gated sodium channels. When key is in the lock, we open these gates up, and sodium, you can guess once again, is going to go high to low into the cell. So we're going to flow that sodium into the cell. And if we gain sodium inside of the cell, what do you think will happen to the voltage of the red neuron? Well, you can guess it's getting more positive. We're getting a more positive charge. So this is now going to go a little upwards. All right, couple of things here. Let me, get, let me uh, ask you a question. What do you think it will be called when we go ever so slightly up? In terms of inhibitory postsynaptic potential, what do you think it will be? Well, you probably said stimulatory postsynaptic potential. It's actually called excitatory postsynaptic potential. So I tricked you there a little bit. Excitatory postsynaptic potential. As you can guess, we shortened that up as EPSP. And we call this going upwards depolarization. Depolarization. We're going away from the pole. Depolarization. Try to write and spell at the same time. It's, or sorry, <laughs> write and spell. Try to write and speak at the same time. It's hilarious. Okay, so these two examples are called graded potentials. Because as you can see, the neuron is still staying pretty negatively charged, right? We're not doing a whole lot inside of this neuron. It's still negative, so it's doing nothing. But here's the kicker. We have another voltage inside of this neuron called negative 55. And we call this the threshold potential. Threshold potential at negative 55. And as you can guess, the word threshold implies like once you cross it, something crazy is going to happen. And that's indeed what's going to happen. So let's say hypothetically, we have enough sodium fly in that gets this neuron to negative 55 millivolts. What's going to happen? Well, we just changed the voltage of the neuron, so we can actually open up some cool gates, one of which is called a voltage-gated sodium channel. And you have a lot of these. So at negative 55 millivolts, this guy is going to open up. And if that guy opens up and you have a lot of them, sodium is going to rush in like crazy, right? So a lot of sodium flying into the cell. A lot of sodium flying into the cell. And if that occurs, what do you think the cell's voltage is going to get? It is going to shoot up like a rocket, just straight up, really crazy. This is called an action potential. 
when we hit threshold, we open up voltage-gated sodium channels, and we have now an action potential. Now, if you look at the word action, it implies it's doing something cool, and that's indeed what it does. When this cell gets super positively charged, I'll just draw it in blue, it's going to send those positive charges down the axon along the signaling branch of the neuron, and it's eventually going to reach the end of the axon. And as you can see, what do we have there? Voltage-gated calcium channels. These guys will then open up. Calcium will flow inward, as we mentioned before. And what's amazing about calcium is that it likes to push things out. So this opens up once again at positive 10 millivolts. Calcium flows in, it likes to push things out, including this neurotransmitter. So the neurotransmitter gets released in response to the action potential. Brilliant. So that's the whole goal of basically a neuron. When it gets stimulated, it gets stimulated, sends action potential, releases neurotransmitter to communicate with somebody else. Brilliant. But the problem with this action potential is that if it stays too positive for too long, a cell can actually die. It doesn't like to be positive for very long. It's almost like it gets shocked a little bit. It wants to say shocked just for a second, but not prolonged. Otherwise, it just like implodes on itself. So we need to make this cell, the voltage, negative again. We need to get it negative again to save itself. How do we do that? Well, first and foremost, we're going to close up these channels at positive 10. So they're going to close at positive 10. So we reach that peak, positive 10, we close up these gates. Okay, I'm just going to like draw through them like this, just so you can tell that they are closed. At that point, we are going to open up voltage-gated potassium channels. So these guys open at positive 10 as well. And you have a lot of these. So think about it. We open up voltage-gated potassium channels, at positive 10. Where will potassium flow? Drastically outwards. Drastically outwards. So we're losing a lot, a lot, a lot of potassium. All right, pause here. We're stopping the flow of sodium, we're losing potassium. Whenever we lose potassium, we get negative again. So I'm gonna draw this in black actually, because we're losing a lot of potassium and we are repolarizing the neuron. Isn't that cool? Okay, so we got negative again because we lost a lot of potassium. If we get negative again, calcium channels will then close up. So these close, I'm just going to say at negative, again, a negative millivolt. So now we are no longer releasing that neurotransmitter. Brilliant. So that is an action potential in a nutshell, but we're not done yet because we've just lost a lot of potassium, gained a lot of sodium. We don't like that because normally we liked the potassium on the inside and we like the sodium on the outside. So we have to reorient the membrane. Can you guess how we do that? Some of your guys' light bulbs just went off, right? After the action potential is sent, we function that sodium-potassium pump. That will throw the sodium back out, throw the potassium back in, keeping potassium high inside, sodium high outside, and we have just reset the whole cell. So once we get back here, I'm just going to write that the sodium-potassium pump is firing. Sodium-potassium pump re orients the membrane. Brilliant. And that is graded potentials as well as action potentials in a nutshell. I hope this was helpful. Sometimes it helps to actually rewatch the video again in case you didn't get it the first time, but like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your time.